though, what's going on, Toxic Gamers? Guess what? We got some brand new news about the next Battlefield game. You guys ready for another one? Oh, hell yeah. It's coming out. Of course, uh, EA has already confirmed that they're working on the next Battlefield game. And now we even have footage for it that I will share with you. And just recently, we ended up getting a brand new leak for the game. And it's sounding good, though. I'll, I have to agree. Hopefully, we're not going to be looking like this by the end of it, guys. Thank you all for the amazing support on the channel recently. You guys have been absolutely killing it. Let's go for 500 likes on the video, but let me know if you guys are down for the next Battlefield game. Like, do you got uh, any hope left for it? Uh, le le let me know in the comments. But I want to show you guys, like, this video uh, in, in a second, but apparently we're hearing that exclusive Battlefield 6 is undergoing franchise's biggest playtest ever to prevent another disastrous launch. Uh, shout out to the homie Tom Henderson. Now, the homie Tom Henderson has been pretty big uh, on the leaks for the, the last Battlefield game, right? You know, the Battlefield 2042. Uh, you know, with that came the don't be sad, it'd be like that sometimes. Some bull squash like that. You know, we had the operator that people memed on, minus 96%, uh, 2.1 user score. We, we've seen it all. I guess it's fair to say we've seen it all. But now we also have this. Shout out to the homie Anders. Wait for it, guys. Roll Anderson it. just released a new article detailing how the next battlefield is being play tested more than ever yeah. to prevent another disastrous launch. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Enders, and in today's video we'll be talking about this brand new Tom Henderson article. I think the headline for this article is pretty hilarious, because you could just <laughs> switch the wording around to be like, EA does the bare minimum to prevent another top 10 worst FPS of all time from releasing. But there are far more details found in this article, so let's go over it. If you enjoy yeah, the content, you hit the like button on this video, really thank everyone that does that. And of course, yeah. subscribe to the channel. Just shout out to all of you for smashing likes. But apparently, before we get into it, this is that video that they revealed uh, almost two months ago at this point, right? So this was their investor day. They started buttering uh, all their investors up. And of course, this is like bare bones, but this is from the next Battlefield game. This is what they said. So we got to take it as face value here. Uh, this is what they said, right? And they did the similar thing for Battlefield 2042. You know that building, that destruction, the evolution? Uh, you remember that video, right? They shared, which was supposed to be for Battlefield 2042. But guess what? Battlefield 2042 didn't have destruction. <laughs> they did not do it. So take it for whatever or however you want to don't take this as like a hundred percent but of course like this is uh, official video this is an official video no cap no diddy uh, like the kids say nowadays right but yeah this is for real for real but wait for it Many of you guys might be regular viewers, but you don't realize you're not subscribed. So do me a favor and check. It only takes one click. And uh, let's see what Tom Henderson has to say. He starts okay, off the article next. by saying Battlefield players have had a reasonably tough time with the franchise these past few years. Um, yeah, that's a bit of an understatement. Reasonably tough time could easily be replaced with the worst time ever, the worst <laughs> the franchise has ever been, yada, yada, yada. He then goes on to detail that the Battlefield community is still extremely apprehensive to trust anything that EA or DICE says about the next Battlefield game because they have to earn the player's trust back. You guys know that I've been on this boat for a while. They have to win you back with results. Don't pre-order oh, the next yeah. game. I don't care how cool that trailer is. Tom Henderson then goes on to remind us that from a funding- Oh, that trailer would make everybody cream. That trailer would be so good that everybody would be like, yeah, man, yeah, take our money, man. Take our money, okay? We, we, gotta, we gotta bow down, yes. Because this is how everybody was when Battlefield 2042 trailer came out. You guys remember that jet shot? You know, you know, right? Like the, the rendezvous, I, I'm forgetting the name. I'm forgetting the name. There's a term for it, not rendezvous, but there's a term for it, a term for it when like the, the guy just ejects from the, from the jet, right? And takes a launcher and pow, son, you know, blows the other one. And everybody creamed their pants. Everybody fell down to their knees uh, like I am doing right now. No duty. Pause. But, but like, you guys know what I'm saying, Bruh. right? Like, the situation was crazy. All right, let's get back to the content here, boo-boo standpoint, the next Battlefield has, quote, the most resources in the franchise's history. Four studios are currently working on Battlefield, DICE, Motive, Criterion Games, and Ripple Effect. In my opinion, oh. this is sort of a double-edged sword because, you know, a lot of studios worked on 2042, you know? Yeah. We, we don't know. Will it be like four studios to uh, shut down Battlefield this time, or will it be four, four studios that saves Battlefield? Find out next. How terrible the communication is. We don't know how weird the workload split is. I don't know. The next sentence in this article really makes me laugh because Tom Henderson says, quote, more importantly, EA and its studios seem more interested in gaining player feedback this time around. Oh, oh really? Oh, really? Well, I wonder why that is. Could it be 
because Battlefield 2042 released and it was the worst Battlefield game of all time and caused international embarrassment for EA and any studio that worked on Battlefield 2042? No, that couldn't possibly be why. And the funniest part about it is Tom is not even wrong. They actually do seem to be more interested in player feedback mm. and it only took the worst Battlefield of all time to coerce them into- Yeah, yeah, jokes aside though, I do believe that this year, this is the one. This is the one, of course not this year, this year is almost over, but if you're watching this in 2025, yes, this year, uh, it's supposed to come out this year in 2025. Now, it's gonna be really, really interesting to see when they reveal it. Wait for it, there's a lot more, guys. But it's gonna be really interesting to see when it comes out. Because I'm sure they don't want to reveal it uh, or release it alongside GTA 6. And God forbids they drop it alongside GTA 6. Because if they do it, as you guys know, uh, it it's over. You know, a minus 96%. Uh, perhaps not minus 96%, but maybe minus 95. You know? Because you, you don't want to drop it alongside GTA 6, bro. It don't work like that. I don't care, like, if it's Call of Duty. Even Call of Duty, I feel like that they're going to either drop it before or after. They're going to wait a little bit. It's going to be tricky. I mean, you, if you remember 2018, right? Like, Red Dead Redemption. I mean, Red Dead Redemption, no disrespect. It's like, people love it. Suckers love it. Suckers love it. Why? Because it's a dang good game, okay? But, but here's the thing though, Red Dead is nowhere near GTA, and no disrespect to different franchises, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that it wasn't even GTA back in 2018 that released, it was Red Dead Redemption 2, and Black Ops 4, th these suckers over at Activision, they had to release it a month early, B why? Because they could not compete, they could not compete with it, they, they were... My bad, I had to act it out like I accidentally uh, pressed the wrong sound effect there. But, but you know what I mean, right? Like, Red Dead Redemption, they had to re release Black Ops for a month early, even when it wasn't even ready to launch, right? It wasn't ready. Blue screens, you remember the, the bugs, the glitches at launch? Activision is like, so what, man? We got Call of Duty beta testers for free, though. Sec is gonna beta test our community. Community is gonna beta test for free. And uh, you know what? They're gonna pay full price for it. So it'll be what it be. Call of Duty players usually are the beta testers, at least at launch, okay? This is how the Mafia works, but yeah, right? This time, man, for a game like Battlefield, it's a completely different scenario. Listen, man, I love both Call of Duty and Battlefield. I want both of these franchises to succeed. I love GTA as well. These are my three top uh, uh, franchises, as sad as it might sound, okay? But uh, if Battlefield, if they want to succeed with Battlefield this year, of course, the game gotta be very good the trailer it, it it's gonna be hard for people to believe in it i feel like this time around right especially uh, after battlefield 2042 because that trailer made everybody cream that trailer was one of the best so this trailer needs to not just be the best but it needs to I guess uh, bring people back. It's gonna be hard, of course, once you see the gameplay, once we get to see the, the beta, we get to play the beta, then people are gonna really decide at that point. But not just that the game needs to be good, but it also need to release either before GTA 6, I'm talking like two months before or two months after. The best thing would be to release it two months after GTA 6 when like the single player, when everybody has played the single player, when everybody has tried out the multiplayer, the GTA 6 online and what have you. Yeah, it should not release at the same time. Otherwise, like it, the, the, the franchise is gonna die. Now, if you're somebody that's like, uh, well, Schkizel, I'm only gonna be buying Battlefield 6. That is awesome, okay? That is good. Listen, man, that is awesome, okay? But here's the thing. Ma majority of the gamers are gonna get GTA 6. If they have the option to play GTA 6 or Battlefield, they're gonna 110% go with GTA 6. That, that, that's simply how the Mafia works. Maybe you're one of those guys that's gonna play both, and I'm one of those guys that I'm gonna, I'm gonna play both, right? I'm definitely gonna be uh, playing both, but uh, if those games are good, <laughs> if that GTA 6, I guess it's gonna be amazing. Hopefully, though. Hopefully, man. Hopefully. But, uh, yeah, right? It, it, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, guys. It's gonna be tough. Do, doing the right thing for the first time ever, basically. I mean, it, like, how stupid is that? Just listen to your player base. Now, here comes the big bombshell of this entire uh -oh. article. Quote, sources say that playtests with external players are happening much more frequently than in ah. past installments. And the amount of ah. data and feedback collected is the most the franchise has seen in its history. From 
and the amount of data and feedback collected is the most the franchise has seen in its history. From small batch feedback sessions to large-scale player tests, Battlefield is now taking the much-needed player-first approach. It's an approach that we'll see continue to be played out coming to the start of the year, too, as it's understood that EA and its studios have been eyeing up the return of the Battlefield community test environment, but to what scale it's incorporated at this time is unclear. Mm. Now, this does sound really good. We'll talk about the community test environment. Instructions unclear. BBC got stuck in toaster. <laughs> yep, instructions must be clear, okay? I repeat, repeat after me. Instructions must be clear, otherwise uh, you, you're gonna hear people say instructions unclear. BBC got stuck in toaster, okay? Like, bruh. Like, I mean, bruh. bruh potentially coming back a bit later in the video, but I just want to touch on the fact that Tom Henderson mentions all this data being collected. Yeah, data, data this and data that. It seems now- Data! Toxic gamers, data! Nowadays, games are just so driven by data. And I understand <laughs> some data they collect is absolutely really important, but I feel as though games before were made with more passion and hands-on understanding of what's wrong with the game, what Facts. needs to be changed, what are our players really talking about, mm, mm, and I just mm. feel like there was a lot more passion involved. This whole Facts. data thing is really sort of dystopian. You know, you just look at a bar graph, you look at a pie, a pie chart, you look at a fucking spreadsheet, like, oh, well, this weapon's being picked 76.29% of the time. Oh, it looks like we have to nerf it. Okay, cool, but what's the nerf? Yeah, the, you can see the pick rate, but what's wrong with the gun? That's mm. my point. And yeah, maybe they can collect data on that as well, but it's kind of easier just to know how your game is from like a player's perspective. And this is where I think the battlefield- I, I think the algorithms are, I mean, of course, like the, uh, the algorithms run the world right now, right? The algorithms are running YouTube. The, the, the fact that you're watching this video is because like you're interested in the topic. Therefore, the algorithm is showing you, right? The algorithm, make no mistake. The algorithms, I guess, are needed, but algorithms in video games on social media, okay, makes sense, right? Because it's uh, catering to your viewing needs. It's going to feed the content, the, the type of content you want to watch. That's the type of content it's going to feed you. Okay, makes sense. But in video games, to a certain degree, yes, you can use AI to help you out, but like having algorithm like skill-based management and EOMM, uh, skill-based damage, you know, all that bull squash that we got in Call of Duty, like these numbers, like the you know, all that, like, dog, like we don't need that, man. We don't need any of that. Just for, for example, you go back 10 years ago, right? You're looking, this game, if I'm not mistaken, came out in 2011. Oh, shit. 2011, guys, this is Battlefield 3. Look at that. It looks amazing. And people love this game. Uh, yo, this is one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites. Hand on top of this bottle of water. I know some of you would say, uh, generally speaking, it's Bad Company 2, which, is ha which happens to be my first Battlefield game. And I love that game a lot. Like, especially the Vietnam DLC when they dropped, right? Oh, man, that was amazing. That, that game was busting. Okay, Vietnam DLC, uh, the entire game as a whole as well, right? And Battlefield 3, back to back, sheesh, man, like, yeah, both of these games are amazing. Battlefield 4 is also something, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2, these are the top three games that the community would always share as an example. Battlefield 4 is like the last best Battlefield game, or I guess, Battlefield 1 was amazing too, but I'm talking about from a modern day standpoint, and these three are the ones that people always uh, uh, praise, right? And, and there's a reason for it, because all three games were amazing. Battlefield 4 was broken at launch, but later on they fixed it, and it was good. But if I have to pick one game, I would go with Battlefield 3. This game was just something else. Did they have algorithms involved? The way they do now? Absolutely not. Maybe they did have some level of AI involvement back in the days, and okay, cool, you want to have a little bit of that help you out? Yes, that's awesome, but I beg to differ, I don't think they had it, but okay, even if they had it, we didn't notice it, essentially. It felt like that this game was made with passion, and at that time, of course, like, the, the, the this game was just miles ahead it was light years ahead in terms of graphics graphically speaking for the time this game looked really real it looked realistic but yet fun which is lacking nowadays either the game is like really super realistic and and no enjoyment because the algorithm is running it there's no like passion involved no heart involved you, you feel what i'm saying uh, yeah they, they really need to get the heart involved they really need to get the passion involved man
the community test environment or CTE is really important, possibly more important than ever for mm -hmm. the next battlefield. And I really do hope to see it return. You might remember yeah, yeah, yeah. in some of the earlier leaks about the next battlefield, uh, someone did tease that there should be another huge announcement for the battlefield community coming in early 2025. And people were speculating that this would be the battlefield CTE for the next game. On top of the potential CTE coming back, Tom Henderson also reminds us that Battlefield seems to be, quote, trying to mend the mistakes it made, returning to a modern military shooter with destruction, four classes, and 64 player oh. battles. Basically, <laughs> returning to what Battlefield has always been and what people wanted out of Battlefield 2042, and I guess what people have wanted for a very, very long time, Maybe. arguably since Battlefield 4. I have been very consistent on this. The Battlefield formula is not complex, and we're just finally seeing some games trying to take a stab at the Battlefield pie. You know, Delta yeah. Force is right yeah. around the corner, releasing on December 5th. Absolutely no competition from Battlefield in sight. Then you have other games that are just trying to poke their heads through into the Battlefield space. You have that uh, War Dogs game, and I believe there's another Battlefield competitor. Maybe comment down below. I forgot the name of it. But the point <laughs> is, companies are seeing Battlefield as vulnerable. They see the player base as up for grabs, and yeah. I hope EA actually acknowledges that. I hope EA isn't arrogant like they typically are and just come. Uh, this is why Call of Duty keeps on succeeding. And admittedly, this year, uh, or I should say, yeah, this year, uh, this time around, Black Ops 6 is odd though. It's not like super impressive, but it's not bad either. But could you imagine if we had like other strong FPS games and one of them being Battlefield out there that was actually good? Now, don't get me wrong. I reinstalled Battlefield 2042 and I've been playing it here and there. Uh, I played a lot more right before B uh, Black Ops 6 though. And yeah, I, I did enjoy my time now of course like i got into it without any expectations of course when the game first, when the game first came out i liked certain things about it but overall the game was did not felt like battlefield right they they just got rid of the dna and all that it did not feel like battlefield but underneath all of that and playing a game without any expectations after they have patched and improved certain aspects it's an all right game it's an all right fps game but the fps scene is com is dry as hell i guess now we only got black ops 6 and warzone that's pretty much it in terms of like the big new triple a fps games yes there are like delta force there are other uh, fps games out there but they aren't like super big x defined uh, as well uh x defined i mean it was humongous right 11 million people at least tried it out now we we're hearing that the game is struggling to hit 25 thousand people oh, shit. Oh. you know we heard that and this is old news uh, right now so i wouldn't be shocked if it's like even below like ten thousand or I, I don't know the actual player count so i'm talking out of my ass right now but we heard this uh and tom henderson made that made an article that ubisoft would have been happy if they were getting twenty five thousand people on x defiant so when you hear this that story you're like bruh like i mean bruh, bruh like is it time to like let it go is it time to just let it go brad is it over i think it's over guys i think it's over x define honestly good some certain things are good about it but it's nowhere near a call of duty killer or a battlefield killer even right now battlefield has always been the top dog and uh, it, it's been falling behind this time i mean in 2025 right it's coming out the next game is coming out which to which they revealed this demo uh to they they revealed this demo right uh i hope i really hope this is the one guys i really hope they 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 don't do us dirty like the way they did it before man this 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 gotta be the one really quickly though if you guys do use twitter i would definitely love to have you there links are always in the description and in the pinned comment all right let's get back to the content here boo boo completely ignores games like Delta Force, which are free to play, by the way. Because make no mistake, if Delta Force is really successful, it is absolutely going to be eating into the Battlefield attention. Battlefield is really not a very popular game. You could look at Google Trends, and you can see that Battlefield for the past really eight years has been dwarfed in attention in comparison to other games. And the only time Battlefield has really sort of come on the scene in a big way is Battlefield, Battlefield 1. 1. Yeah. And Battlefield 1 at its peak was barely reaching the average interest level of Call of Duty. That, that's sad, right? Because I love Battlefield 1. And it, what he's saying is true. Uh, it seems like that Battlefield... And, and it should be up there with Call of Duty. Because it is good. It's a good franchise. I'm not talking Battlefield 2042 or Battlefield 5. They have some good things about them. Don't get me wrong. But Battlefield 1 should have just annihilated Call of Duty when Infinite Warfare came out. But even then it did not. Because of Modern Warfare Remastered. And because it's Call of Duty, right? Yeah, Battlefield 1 was a solid game. It was a solid game. Duty. Which is crazy to think about. So mm. let's just hope at the next Battlefield game, they realize that they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They really don't. 
They just have to deliver a very basic, high-quality, non-buggy, classic Battlefield experience with nothing that's really going to catch us off guard in any massive way. The atmosphere has to be executed correctly, it should be darker, it should be grittier, it should be quote-unquote more immersive, but it should also retain the arcadey nature that Battlefield has always been enjoyed mm, for. Mm, 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 you should be able facts, to Randazook. You should be able to launch tanks with C4 on the rooftop. Yeah, Randazook, I believe that's the name for that, the, you know, the guy that leaves the, 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 the fighter jet and then like, POW, son, you know? Yeah, that's the part that they got a lot of people with in the initial Battlefield 2042 trailer. The buildings. You should be able to do all this stupid stuff that the Battlefield player base loves, right? That is what makes Battlefield, Battlefield. So I suppose mm. we shall see how this playtesting pans see. out. Personally, I hope it works out very well. I would love to be able to see the Battlefield franchise make a comeback. I would love to be able to talk very positively about the game, gushingly even. I would love yeah, to yeah. have my first impressions of the next Battlefield be so positive that you guys get excited to hear me be excited about the game, seeing as I've been so negative uh, about the past two titles, and rightfully so. So thank you guys so much for watching. And, and guys, apparently Activision right now is starting to take down YouTube channels over this. Check out this video on the screen. There's huge drama going on in the Call of Duty scene where Activision is trying to also get data, actual data, name, addresses on people. Yeah, right? Like, it's a crazy situation. Check out this video on the screen and I'll see you right there.